Today we're going to show you how to install your Pro Rock 44 inside your Jeep Wrangler. We're going to show you how to remove your old axle and then put in your new Pro Rock 44. So we have two hood pins. First thing you're going to need to do is get it up in the air. We're going to use a lift or you will probably be using jack stands. It's important to get your Jeep high enough where your suspension will be fully drooped in order to remove your axle. Next, we're gonna take the wheels and tires off. When you take the parts off of the left side or the parts off the right side, make sure we keep it organized so parts go back where they belong. Next up is to remove the drain plug to remove the fluid. You will need a 3 8 ratchet with an extension without the socket. We're now going to remove all of the steering components off the axle, so the drag link, tie rod, and the hydro assist. Once you've broke free, make sure you leave the nut on. That way when it does break free completely, the tie rod does not crush your feet. We will then take a hammer and hit right here. While you are using the hammer, we do suggest safety glasses. You're going to want to use a bungee or a strap or some type of component in order to push it up so it, the steering components are up out of your way so you can finish working on your axle. Now it's time to take the calibers off. You're going to need a 21 millimeter socket and then we're going to pull it up out of the way so that there are no pressure on your brake lines. Normally, when you take the brake calibers off, your rotors are free. In this case, this Jeep does have wheel spacers, so we're going to remove these in order to remove our rotor. We're going to show you a tech tip on how to keep your ABS safe. We're going to remove the bolt from it, and then we're going to loosen the unit bearing in order to remove it without damaging it. When pulling out your axle shaft, make sure that you protect your steel surface. You don't want to damage it, so we're just going to wrap it up. We're going to be reusing the knuckle, axle shafts, and the unit bearings, so we're going to remove the cutter pins and get the nuts off the ball joints in order to remove our knuckles. We're going to need to break it loose, so we're going to take a hammer and we're going to hit the knuckle and have it drop. This is a factory Rubicon axle, so there are two sensors that we need to go ahead and remove. The top has a clip on the top that will pop, and then the one back here has a red clip that we push to one side, and you are able to remove both sensors. Before we take the control arms off, we're going to go ahead and remove our drive shaft. So here's another tech tip for you. So we will, once the drive shaft is removed, we will tape the end caps on the U-joints so that nothing falls off and is damaged. So when we remove two of our control arms, the axle is going to rotate. So we're going to loosen all of the bolts on the control arms and the shocks so that it's easier to remove them completely. So before you take the control arm bolts out, you're going to need to support your axle. We have this jack, you will most likely have jack stands. Once everything's stabilized, you're gonna need some help because as soon as you remove the control arms, it's gonna rotate. So now we are ready to roll it out from underneath the Jeep. So we're installing a Pro Rock 44 housing, so we will take the gears and the locker from the Rubicon axle along with the axle shafts and place them in the new Pro Rock 44. 
we do recommend that you go to a professional to have your gear set. So we're ready to put the new Pro Rock 44 in this Jeep. You're gonna want if someone to help you, just those extra hands. You will need to start with the lower control arm first in order to put it on so your axle doesn't spin. So with the one control arm bolt in, you're gonna wanna drop your axle in order to put your springs back in. I personally like this cast helical coil seat. So you will turn it and make sure that the end of your coil is there. Now you can go ahead and put the bolts in the last three control arms. I just finished attaching the shocks. Tech tip for you, do not tighten any of your control arms until you are down on the ground at ride height. So the next step is to install the knuckle on your axle. So there's a sequence with installing your knuckle and doing it properly. You will snug the bottom bolt first, and then you will snug the top. And then we're going to put the bottom at 100 foot-pound torque, and then the top will be at 85. So you wanna make sure that it feels firm, but you can still be able to move it by hand. And then put your cotter pins in. So we cleaned the axle shaft. We put grease on the axle seal surface and the splines. We're going to now carefully place it in in order to not damage the axle seal inside. We're now gonna put on the unit bearing. Don't forget your backing shield. So don't forget about your ABS bolt, and then we will need the three unit bearing bolts torqued to 75 pounds, and then the axle nut we will put on and torque to 100. We're going to reattach the drive shaft now, and then we will reconnect the wiring for the locker. So now we're gonna install our rotors and then our calibers and make sure that we get the caliber bolts torqued to 120 foot pounds. So now we're gonna get the steering components back on. So we got the drag link, the tie rod, and the hydro assist frame. So your axle is not centered when you first put it in. Your track bar is what centers it. So we're gonna put a ratchet strap on and get it centered in order to install the track bar. On the Pro Rock 44, there is a slot for your flag nut in order to install it easier. So you want the flag down. Don't forget to put the oil in your axle. On the Pro Rock 44, there are two plugs that you will need to remove. You fill from the top, and then when the bottom starts showing some oil, you are finished. Now that we filled the axle we're e and we've installed everything else, we're going to put the tires back on, and then once it's on the ground, tighten our control arms.